If you've been trying to buy a house since the pandemic, you would have felt like this. And this. And even probably like this. Pandemic policies that were implemented almost identically across the developed world created massive, ridiculous, speculative demand for housing which has seen house prices skyrocket, rental vacancies plummet and rent prices surge astronomically. If that was not enough, massive inflation which was also caused by pandemic policies has now made it even harder for home buyers to get into the market. So trying to buy a home over the past few years has probably been the hardest it's ever been in history. So the question now for home buyers, should you bite the bullet and do everything you possibly can to get into the market? Or should you wait for house prices to decline and even potentially crash? I'm Biko Constantinos and that's what we're going to talk about today. If you work, buying your own home should not be difficult. A thriving society ensures that housing remains affordable. But sadly, countries like Australia, Canada and New Zealand have said screw you to housing affordability and now even double income families can't even afford to buy a home. But there's one thing I know that you can afford. Subscribing to my channel. It's totally free, somewhat entertaining, but always contains research and independent comments commentary and delivered by an Australian with Greek heritage. What more could you want? So please hit that like button and click on subscribe if you haven't already done so. Firstly, let's consider the current landscape for home buyers. Pandemic policies saw house prices soaring in most developed countries by up to 30 to 40 percent. Now this is nowhere near normal for a property market and in fact those price rises are more like a speculative stock or even a cryptocurrency the way they traded. But we didn't just see price rises, we saw incredible demand for property. With house prices being snapped up in one or two days after listing, massive amounts of buyers competing for individual properties, and often properties selling for higher than the asking price or going way above reserve in an auction. So basically, this is an absolute disaster scenario for someone wanting to buy their own home. And because property prices rose so ridiculously, investors who owned multiple properties were so cashed up they could easily outbid first home buyers to buy more and more properties. In real financial terms, people who haven't been able to buy a property have basically lost hundreds and thousands of dollars compared to property owners. For example, a property that was worth 800000 prior to the pandemic pandemic has now gone up 40% or $320,000. So for the first home buyer to get that same property that used to be $800,000, they now have to pay over $1.1 million, meaning their debt is going to be $320,000 more than if they bought prior to the pandemic. And yes, that example is overly simplified, but wealth-wise, that's the disastrous situation now being faced by non-home owners. And the worst thing, it's nearly all to do with with government and central bank intervention. If all of this wasn't bad enough, pandemic policies have also created a rental crisis. So not only do renters have the monumental task of buying property that is so much more expensive, they now have ridiculous surging rents, which means way more of their income is going to paying the rent, so it's harder and harder to save for a deposit, which now has to be way bigger. Seriously, this is an absolute disaster created by government governments and central banks and everyone just acts like it's normal because we had a pandemic. No, it's not normal. Housing affordability has deteriorated to drastic crisis levels and this has the potential to lead to massive civil unrest. With all that being said, if you're looking to buy a home, should you buy now or wait. Now I'm definitely not going to tell you what to do personally, but I will make a case for both scenarios and then at the end I'll give you my personal feelings regarding the future direction of house prices. I'm going to start off with why it could be best to wait 
before buying a home. Now here's some of the main reasons why I believe that house prices could decline or even crash. And when I say crash, I'm thinking of prices falling by around 20 to 30%. Firstly, all the additional savings that people were able to accrue during COVID because of ultra generous stimulus measures and interest rates being reduced to zero have now all been depleted. If you look at this graph showing US additional savings, you can see how they spiked after the pandemic and nearly all that extra money saved is now gone. Next, look at the overall credit card debt. In the US, credit card debt keeps rising and I'm sure the majority of people aren't paying off their balance every month, which means they're getting charged astronomical amounts of interest on that credit card debt. And you've got stats like this showing that many Americans actually live paycheck to paycheck. So considering that the US is the world's largest economy, things might look okay when you see the headline figures of GDP growth and things like that, but underneath the surface Surface, we could be marching towards an economic cliff. Next, we've got the effects of higher interest rates. You see, prior to the pandemic, interest rates had been kept artificially low, encouraging more and more debt. But now we've seen interest rates surge across the globe and the effects of interest rate rises are often lagging, which means they could really start impacting over the next six to 12 months. Now, many people are expecting interest rates to drop way back down to those ultra low levels, but the era of super cheap debt may now be over for good. Many economists are actually now predicting that interest rates will stay higher for longer. Now, higher interest rate environment will be harder for business and a lot harder for mortgage holders. And this will definitely have a huge impact on the global economy, which could put downward pressure on house prices. And that leads me to my next theme, unemployment. Since we've had such ultra low unemployment levels, most people have been fine to be able to repay their mortgages because the job market's been so very tight, meaning you can pick up extra jobs if you need to or look for higher paying jobs, etc. But nearly every Every economist is now predicting that unemployment levels will rise from here and that's when the real pain could be felt for the economy because when unemployment rises you'll see a drastic decline in consumer spending and that will affect the profitability of many businesses around the world and that will lead to more layoffs which will just accelerate those unemployment levels making them rise faster and because higher house prices have meant people have needed to get larger and larger mortgages if you lose your job and don't find another one quickly a a lot of people might be forced to sell their home and that's when we could really see house prices fall significantly. So any uptick in unemployment could lead to declines in house prices. On top of all this, there's things happening across the globe which could have downward pressure on economies which could then put downward pressure onto property prices. We've got the continuing Russia-Ukraine war and who knows when that's going to end or what the full ramifications will be. We've got China going through a property and economic crisis. And because China is such a huge buyer of global companies, any reduction in that buying is going to have a huge global effect. And then we've just got a lot of volatility. Crude oil has started surging again, meaning that petrol prices is back to near all time highs. The cost of living is sky high and there's signs that inflation is ticking upwards in some areas. So if we already have sky high prices of goods and services, but they continue rising strongly, there's going to be a massive economic impact, which could send many countries into a deep recession. So all these factors I've mentioned should lead to lower house prices and depending on how severe they are, we could witness a full blown crash which would mean houses would be much more affordable for home buyers. But why might it be better for home buyers to strike now and get into the market as soon as possible? Well if house prices just keep on rising from here, you'd be better to get in while you can otherwise you might never be able to afford it. Now here's why house prices could keep on rising from here. First, we've got many countries who have opened the immigration floodgates, taking their immigration numbers to the highest levels ever. The countries at the forefront of this mass immigration push are Canada, Australia and New Zealand. In the past 12 months, Canada's surged their population by about a million, Australia by about 600,000 and New Zealand's also going hell for leather. So these countries are surging their population through mass migration, but at the same time, property development is collapsing due to surging costs and high interest rates. So you've got this much property needed, but you've got a supply of this much, and it ends up creating ridiculous demand
done that helps support house prices and in Canada and Australia's case sees them rising even though interest rates have surged. So creating hyper demand through mass migration is one reason that property prices could keep rising. Now just to add my two cents in, I think it's disastrous that these countries who have the most expensive and speculative housing markets are going on an immigration on steroids type program while they have many citizens struggling to find a place to rent or to just pay their rent in general. I think it's a terrible policy that's pushing many renters towards poverty and some are being made homeless and pushed out onto the streets. Next, we've just got crazy demand for property where you see renters desperate to get out of the rental market bidding for their own home. But you also have investors who have seen 30 years of ridiculous property gains just want to keep buying more property because you can earn more with property than you can working at a job. And when property prices surge year after year, you end up with countries that are obsessed over property. I mean, demand for property in Australia is so outrageously ridiculous, there could be a nuclear war and the cockroaches that remain would still be bidding on Sydney land and property. I mean, you haven't seen deterioration of housing affordability until you've seen some of the houses selling for over $1 million in Sydney, Australia. Now, the other thing that could happen, especially if economies start getting into trouble, is that central banks could come to the rescue and drop interest rates sharply. And that could see properties continue surging as people are able to borrow more. And you still have a lot of fear of missing out because people have seen property get further and further out of reach. So some sharp reductions in interest rates could get that speculative housing bubble going up again. All right, so here's my personal thoughts for house prices. Now take this with a grain of salt because recent history has shown that government intervention has a massive effect on house prices. So even the well-researched and thought out predictions actually mean nothing. And there's also a theory that property prices are being risen on purpose to try and make housing more and more unaffordable to usher in the great reset or to move the world towards a scenario where you will own nothing and be happy. But these thoughts are just based on the information available at the moment and not any global agendas. I think interest rates are going to stay higher for longer, putting many countries into some sort of recession, which will lead to unemployment rising. With unemployment rising and interest rates still relatively high, that should put enough pressure on house prices to see them start declining over the next 6 to 12 months. As this rental crisis continues, I think countries are going to have to step in. Otherwise, they could end up with a massive humanitarian crisis. So because they might have to step in and protect some of these renters, that could also put downward pressure on house prices. Because at the moment, in places like Australia, nearly all the current housing policies end up benefiting property owners and doing nothing for renters. So I'm leaning towards house prices declining in the next 6 to 12 months. But I don't feel we'll see a full-blown crash unless unemployment rises rises sharply. But that is a possibility and something to look out for. But one thing's for sure, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. I'm Biko Constantinos.